Hey guys, this is Zach with Farm Table West again, coming back with another geothermal climate battery update because it's been about a year uh, since I did the very first video uh, about the this greenhouse, and uh, I've learned a lot since then. So um, thought it'd be a good idea to do an update since we uh, here just had a week of. Uh, single digit nights got down to four degrees in October, which sucks. Uh, definitely annoying, but um, kind of unusual to get it that early. But um, you know, it is what it is. And the bright side is um, everything did amazing in here. Um, so I just rewatched that video I did in March of this year which kind of updated you on the whole winter growing process with this and um, since then I've grown tomatoes in here uh, early tomatoes where I planted them in like April and got them uh, basically by mid-June and by 4th of July I had hundreds like a couple hundred pounds a week coming out of here so um, during that whole time I was doing the, I was running this geothermal system. And for those of you who haven't seen the other videos, um, I'll probably put a link to them uh, in the show notes or maybe over here, because um, that'll explain what I have going on here exactly. But um, the short version is I've got 22 to 28 uh, lengths of four inch pipe, six feet underground. Each pipe has a fan blowing air from uh, this side of the greenhouse to this side um, and that's where it comes out and so originally we thought this was gonna be more of an actual geothermal setup but it's really more of a climate battery meaning that it warms up during the day and releases that heat during the night um, and for the money that you put into this I think it's a really good uh, value depending on what your goals are you know um, for what I have growing in here right now um, everything in here is frost hardy so I'm not going to be growing um, basil and stuff like that in the winter time um, but the value in this whole system is it gets you a good uh, 25 degrees temperature difference from outside which without any heat uh, in here would probably only be four or five degrees at best, even with the double layer uh, plastic and polycarbonate end walls. Because this is an above ground high tunnel, um, which is what most people build for a permanent style, uh, non-rigid plastic greenhouse, it's kind of the most economical way to go especially if you're doing this as a business. Um, the underground stuff is, is cool. Um, that's a totally different thing. That's much more, the, the Wallapini kind of greenhouses are much more um, better than this. Uh, you know, if you could do that for a homestead, that's a pretty good system. But um, if you're gonna do any kind of market gardening, this is a pretty decent option because uh, the, I just looked at the my actual propane bill um, for our April and May, which is when I was trying to heat this space to 50 degrees at night for those tomatoes. It was only about 300 bucks a month to keep this whole space at 50 degrees at night, um, which is pretty cheap because propane was 375 a gallon um, at the time. So. The, the the geothermal or the climate battery setup helped keep that price down a lot. I'm sure it'd be probably close to double if we didn't have this. So it already you know probably saved six seven hundred dollars right there. And I've been heating. I was heating uh, my nursery over here, which I don't have anything in right now because it's October. Um, we'll actually start filling it up soon again. But uh, that didn't cost very much to heat. But I still heated that with propane too and electric. Um, but uh, the other new thing I've got in here that I didn't have in the last video is uh, fans um, and I think those are making a huge difference I got three circulation fans in here 
This is a pretty small greenhouse. It's only 48, 30 by 48. Um, I might put a few more in here eventually, but uh, so far it's worked pretty well. That already, I could tell, has probably bumped it up a couple degrees just by circulating the air. Because what I've got going on behind me here, these are the... Uh, These are the output pipes, and you can see they're kind of just they're just in a pile because they're really hard to point. Uh, you know, we didn't put any kind of manifold up over here because it's a ton of work to make that manifold that we have on the other end. Um, and I, I'm a farmer, so I have a lot of other work to do, so I try to not have to do as much of this kind of stuff. Um, but the air still pumps out pretty good on here, but it kind of doesn't move around the whole tunnel um as well but since we have let me uh we got three of these circulation fans going 24 7 that really helps move the air around in here um and I, you know i'm gonna put that in in uh, all my greenhouses from now on these circulation fans are a game changer i bet you that's it, it makes it warmer at night, even without the geothermal, just because it circulates that warm air down to the ground a lot better. So I got them kind of pointed down. So if you have something, I don't think you need to buy as fancy as fans as I do, but any kind of air circulation in a greenhouse is gonna help immensely. I mean, that's just, that's kind of common knowledge with greenhouses anyway, but it's the first time I've ever actually done it myself. So last week, uh, basically it got down to like four or five degrees three nights in a row in October so uh, nothing in here froze uh, it, it actually the coldest it got down in here was 28 um, and as you could see I did well I uncovered all this stuff today because I wanted to check on it because um, today we're look going into a week of really nice fall weather where it's only gonna be like 32 at night but I double covered everything with these frost fabrics. And these are the lightest weight ones. I think they're uh, AG19, if you know what that means. It's the lightest weight one, basically. Because this way you can adjust how much fabric you want. And right now, it's still October. And our last 10-hour day is November 7th. So we still have a week of growth. And as you can see here, these guys aren't really quite done growing yet. So... Um, I got bok choy in here, um, spinach, uh, lettuce I'm trying out for the first time for real winter. I'm not sure if this is going to grow fast enough, but we'll see. I'm going to water it tomorrow, and it's going to have a full week to grow until the last 10-hour day. And I've got parsley, which is really tough, and cilantro. Um, and then over here I've got, uh, this was basil. Uh, I didn't bother to cover this because basil just can't take any frost, um, so I didn't really care. And um, but I did cover this celery over here that I've had growing since literally April, and I've been harvesting off this oh, probably three times by now. And we'll get one more harvest before it gets really cold. And I'm so excited about this. Wasn't sure if this was going to survive because I, you know wasn't expecting it to get to four degrees this early you know i was expecting it late november but i could tell if i water this really well tomorrow i bet you it'll grow another five ten percent by the time november 7th rolls around and that's huge i could already tell uh i wish i did a video a week ago to see the difference but this stuff actually all grew this week and it was basically below freezing for an entire week, even in the daytime. So I double covered everything and it barely froze in here at night because of the geothermal, uh, or the climate battery, I should start calling it that. I think that's what we'll, I'll label it from now on. Um, but it worked amazingly. Uh, I'm blown away by how well it's worked because this stuff actually grew. I'm quite confident of that because I remember what it looked like before and you could just see it looks flawless there wasn't there's no frost damage at all and actually here's the real uh way to tell those are tomatoes um if it did freeze in here those would be dead they don't do any frost so that's really really cool 
Um, and the uh, the output temps of the, the the pipes over there, basically the lowest it got was like 46. So what's happening now that now that I kind of know how to use this thing, this whole system, you got to keep it on all the time and keep the greenhouse closed uh, as much as possible. I'm only going to really vent it. Now I have these, I also have exhaust fans up here uh, and I didn't have those last time, but those are going to help with getting rid of humidity. Um, but I'm hoping to keep it, you know, in the eighties in here as much as I can the next couple weeks, because that's just going to charge this, these pipes up and that'll get, that'll basically make it so, um, you know, it won't freeze in here hopefully until December. Um, that really depends because we still can easily get another winter blast like I just had, but, um, I already know from experience that everything in here is going to be like very, very unaffected until it gets to negative 20, you know? Um, and I'm planning on harvesting at least half of this stuff before then. So, uh, the only thing I'll really be keeping in here in the negative 20 is the spinach probably parsley the cilantro is not quite as tough this celery will definitely be out of here by then um, and i got a couple other greenhouses full of winter stuff now i'll do a winter video where i explain everything i got growing on in there um but that stuff's still growing believe it or not uh at least that's what my plan is um so this last week it's really going to grow a lot and i could already tell it's it's like um all of these plants, the ma the majority of the growth happens in the last like two weeks, uh, even in the summertime. And I could really tell that's true now because this uh, parsley and cilantro, you could easily see the ground a week ago, but it's already like doubled in size, even in that crazy cold snap that we just got. So I'm absolutely thrilled with how well um, this has performed. Th this was probably half the size it was a week ago and that's pretty amazing given how cold it was so it's cool what uh now that i'm kind of understanding how this works um that uh it, it's definitely a better option than i thought it was a year like back in march you know um so Anyway, a short little update on what I've learned the past year since I finally have had this thing running for a year. Um, I basically turned it off in the summer because I don't need it in the summer. Um, but I started to turn, I turned it back on about a month ago, maybe longer, start charging up that ground. I probably should have turned it on a little earlier just to keep that, because I think probably could have bumped up the, the temperatures for a little while, but um, we're still getting in the 80s in here every day uh, right now and that'll probably continue for a good couple weeks 70s 80s and that'll just keep warming up that ground underneath um, and hopefully we'll keep the output temps in the 40s you know till at least December but this definitely is um, not gonna work super well once we get to our real deep winter cold but that doesn't necessarily happen every winter, so uh, we'll see how well it works. I'm, I'm excited to see how it, go it works um, if we don't get a negative 20 blast, um, but we pretty much always do, so. Um, but if we don't, it could be like this. The crops could be looking this good all winter, which is very exciting. Um, so anyway, I thought I'd do a little update on that, and uh, I'll do a, a winter produce update here in a, about two weeks because um, I got a whole bunch more winter stuff growing um, but I just was I thought I'd update you because I could tell um, it's working better than it was like a year ago because I, I had just got it put in and um, now that I know how to how to use it a little better uh, we sailed through a week uh, a whole week where it got down into single digits every night and that's a pretty big shock for plants. You know, plants get acclimated to that. Um, you know, I was kind of planning on that happening in November or something, but it would be in the 20s for like a couple weeks before. It's literally barely gotten below freezing up until last week. So 
it's a huge shock to plants that aren't acclimated to that and everything pretty much sailed through it. And part of that's because I've had a couple years experience already and I double covered everything that I could, um, which takes a lot of work, but it was totally worth it, I could already tell, because there's the frost damage is almost nothing, um, even on the unheated greenhouse stuff. But in here, it's even less, I put crops that are even less cold hardy and they are flawless and they actually grew. You know, I didn't even expect anything to grow. I just was trying to keep stuff alive so it would grow this week, but I could tell everything grew. Um, man, I wish I had a video for a week before this. I, could, I just can tell. Um, everything in here is almost double the size from a week ago. And a week ago, it, hadn't, it barely had gone below freezing outside. Because it's been a very warm October up until, you know, our little winter blast. But this, all these brassicas are just exploding. The spinach is exploding. So I'm pretty confident it'll be mature in a week um by november 7th because it's october 30th right now i'll post this video today so it will be on that date and then um so yeah we'll get a little you'll get to see how how much this grows because i'll probably do that other video you know in a week or so and um but yeah if your uh geothermal climate battery uh techniques um, check out the videos I've done before explaining what what we've got going here because I haven't You know our the actual climate battery hasn't changed at all since then. It's just um, I've kind of learned how to use it a little better Cause I think I was turning it on and off still back then and I didn't know I didn't know because I hadn't had any experience But now I'm definitely going to just keep it on all the time during this time of year and I think the the real gold here is um you know, if you live in a climate where you don't get as insane cold as we do, which honestly most places in the U.S. do, do you're not going to have negative 20 in most places in the U.S., um, even a lot of Canada, too. Uh, uh, you could really do some cool stuff here because, uh, you know, you could probably grow um, most frost-hardy things in any kind of zone, like zone 5 or below with this system with almost no propane or, or you know you'd have to play with it for sure every climate's different um, but obviously if it works in my climate it should work in uh, anything warmer so um, yeah check out those videos and stay tuned for the next one I'm really excited now I was really worried about this week up until today now that I've checked everything and I've, now that I can tell things are actually grown, it's really, really exciting. So stay tuned for more updates and um, have a good week.